Hello everyone and welcome to today's Chrissy B Show. Now have you ever found yourself in debt? Are you worried about losing everything? Do you keep getting calls chasing you for payment? And is it getting too much for you and even affecting you mentally? If so, then this show today is for you. Just like people with a mental health problem, those with debt issues will often suffer in silence. And the connection there is that being in debt can actually cause a mental health problem in the first place, such as anxiety and depression. And contrarily, debt itself can be a result of a mental health problem. So it's definitely a subject that we need to address here on The Chrissy B Show. Now here's some statistics for you. In a recent poll carried out by MoneySavingExpert.com, of 6,700 people, 44% of those have had mental health problems or have partners who do, and had severe or crisis debt. This is five times as many as everyone else. And according to the website mentalhealthy.co.uk, 38% of those seeking debt help had considered or attempted suicide as a way out. 77% of those seeking debt help who are in a couple said debts affected their relationship. Well, tonight we'll be doing our bit to help those who are struggling with their debts. We'll go through how to handle debts, how to work with banks, and give you at home more information on the free debt counselling that is available out there. On the show today, we have with us psychologist Glenn Mason, who will be telling us more about the mental health effects debt can cause. We've also brought on policy advisor Joe Surtees from Step Change Debt Charity, who will be telling us the type of debt help that's available out there and what they do in particular as a charity. Now, of course, the fitter your body is, the fitter your mind will be to deal with any issues you might have, including debt and depression problems. Plus, spending time outdoors is great for your mental health. So we'll also be taking a look at some exercise tips from our fitness expert, Jane Rafter. And later on, I'll be giving you my top tips on a different type of debt, and that's how not to be in debt with people and how to be reliable and trustworthy instead. And I'll explain to you later why it's so important. So stay tuned for that. But first, it's the news with Jenny Cortez Ibanez. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Lovely to be back. Yes, nice. Yeah. You haven't had you on for a long time. I know. I've been <laughs> Just away. been working behind the scenes and been on holiday, <laughs> yeah. having lots of massages. And stuff. Yeah, taking a break. Thank you. Yes. Always advice. Yeah, that's so, yeah. true. Happy taking your advice. Um, <laughs> Another awesome topic today, uh, something that we definitely need to address, which is two, two very taboo subjects, I say, mm. like you said earlier um, in your introduction. Um, so it's great that we get to chat about it tonight. So it's also something that we hear and see a lot in, in a real day, everyday life. Yeah. Um, and that's also reflected um, in the news and in the media of today. Mm. Um, and not just ordinary people, but businesses, it affects businesses as well. So um, from The Guardian again, have long, um, um, taken uh, so businesses have taken debt for a very long time obviously to expand yeah. and grow and develop their businesses but they don't know what actually happens if their plans don't go um, don't succeed uh, and what happens they um, have to deal with unimaginable and unmanageable uh, debts mm. um, and it's not only affected them uh, professionally but also personally cool. yeah. and um, the money advice trust has been running the business deadline for 10 years um, and giving it a strong insight into the debt challenges small businesses face in particular and new figures suggest that um, the number of people contacting the deadline uh, for advice has increased this year unfortunately mm. and in the first six months of 2015 it provided advice to 29,244 people compared to uh, 42,352 for the whole of 2014. So you can already see the huge increase there. Well, uh, it could be that, obviously, there might be an increase, of course, but it yeah. could be that people are just seeking advice, whereas maybe they were going through issues before and didn't yeah. ask for help. We're going in blind. Could be, yeah. yeah. So maybe. Um, but on, these, on this report, the trust says that this is partly also due to the huge growth of self-employment since mm. the recession. So, as you mentioned, many small businesses struggle and obviously they seek advice, but they struggle especially in the early years of their yeah. business. Um, so they're contacted more by those type of uh, businesses. And the amount businesses owe can be very significant. So they say some 7% of the businesses that um, are contacted by the deadline in 2014 owe more than £100,000. Mm. 
while 12% owed between 50 to 100,000 pounds. It's, it's huge, it's huge um, amounts. Um, and these difficulties, as I mentioned earlier, come at a very big cost, um, not only professionally, but um, also mentally, emotionally. So last year, more than 80% of the helplines callers say they've suffered from stress, anxiety, depression, things that we talk about mm. on the show all the time. Um, around half were losing sleep due to their debts and around a quarter were suffering relationship problems something that you actually yeah. mentioned in mm -hmm. introduction. Um, callers also reported having suicidal thoughts, again, something you mentioned in your introduction, uh, and suffering stress-induced dizziness and experiencing significant weight loss. Mm -hmm. So those are the common symptoms that happen to these people who unfortunately have to um, go through these financial mm -hmm. problems. And also loneliness is a very common part of this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're often, um, you know, in, in, in today's society, they don't seem to get as much support network as they should do or maybe they are now that mm -hmm. this is coming out um, so that's what's going on in the headlines today uh, and with celebrities so um, lots of celebrities have uh, overcome problem with debts uh, such as Simon Cowell so he um, before TV fame on ITV's pop idol and the X Factor that we know of today mm -hmm. Britain's Got Talent etc he actually went through debt uh, debt after his record label fanfare shut down years ago um, and after he lost his house Cowell had to actually move back um, in with his parents because they literally didn't have like a penny yeah. to his name so uh, but then we know now of his a successful story after mm. that so um, you know people can overcome it yeah. Suzanne Shaw I don't know if you remember hearsay back in the 1990 uh, end of 90s or 2000 I don't know if you no. know this uh, so basically it's another um, group that was formed um, uh, oh, yes, after yes, a reality yes, show yeah, yeah. Um, so and she you know um, suffered from problem with debt due to credit cards spending and not saving on any of that earnings mm. um, and she had to pay back £200,000 of debt over eight years wow. um, and she blamed it on you know getting uh, famous and um, rich at an early age so mm. she wasn't aware of how to handle her money etc and we see a lot of these celebrities young celebrities especially that um, go through this problem well, especially when you don't have anything and all of a sudden you have all that money all of that <laughs> I mean like you know you want to buy the world and yeah. you do and you forget oh there's taxes to pay or this and that mm. so yeah um, but there's lots of them actually that have mm -hmm. gone through that. Uh, Perez Hilton, so he's a blogger, um, he had filed for bankruptcy due to soaring credit card bills and sky high college debts etc etc but now he's known um, and he owed over £32,000. Kerry Katona that we know here, um, she had to pay back £400,000 in tax bill. Um, and uh, she did try in 2008 to do it all by herself, but at the end filed for bankruptcy mm. um, for the second time, uh, yeah, recently. Um, and apparently there's allegations that, that she's going for the third time as well. Oh. Yeah, so, and that's apparently, so I'm not yeah. sure about that. <laughs> um, celebrities that have been hit hard by debt. So I, this one is apparently according to Daily Mail reports that Sarah Ferguson, the 51-year-old um, mm. Duchess of York, is actually virtually broke, and I quote, virtually broke, um, on top of unpaid bills of over $400,000 um, and the recent closure of her NYC-based PR company, Hartmore. She's been slapped with a $40,000 um, lawsuit for failing to stop the release of a controversial book, so on and so forth. Wow. Yes. Um, Lindsay Lohan, mm. uh, you know, uh, she's somebody who's also had a very troubled um, few years um, in, the, in the spotlight all the time um, in the headlines as well um, she's also struggled um, financially mm -hmm. um, and she's um, actually over, she had over 233,000 unpaid taxes to catch up with but she thankfully to, um, because of a um, deal with the Oprah Winfrey um, show there was a two million uh, dollar documentary that she signed up to but she didn't finish so we're not sure where the deal how the deal is going to no. get and, uh, 
might end up in court uh, because she wasn't able, you know she was very unprofessional apparently yeah. and didn't actually finish that so it's an ongoing issue for her there's Michael Jackson so he died in obviously 2009 and he was 500 million dollars in debt wow. with 65 creditors coming forward to claim some of this money to this date his estate has generated 750 million dollars and there was even some more money um, to give to his family members according um, to this report and the executors of the state have not been able to resolve the claims of all of his um, financial um, a backlog and uh, to help settle further it has been announced that the 2700 acre Neverland ranch in LA will soon be put up for sale to try and help really? yeah um, put this through and also obviously for the sake of his children mm. uh, there's people like MC Hammer MC Hammer um, was living in a 30 million dollar mansion and had uh, and a very adoring entourage following him around. Then in 1996, he filed for bankruptcy when a combination of low record sales and lavish spending caught up with him. So yeah, lavish spending is the word for these um, wow. individuals, these rich people. Oh, I don't even have to leave it though. Well, thank oh. you so, so much for enlightening us. Oh, thank you. Oh, so this show tonight is definitely gonna help people at home. Yes, definitely. Yes. All right, so up next guys, we'll find out more about the mental effects of debt to an individual as we speak to psychologist Glenn Mason and we also show you ways to save when going shopping. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky 203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show. If you've just joined us, today is about depression and debt, two subjects that are closely linked for many people who end up suffering in silence unnecessarily. So before I meet my next guest, let's take a look at some facts and figures about debt in the UK this year. So some very worrying statistics there. And to find out about the mental effects of what debt can do to an individual, we have with us psychologist Glenn Mason via Skype. Hello, Glenn. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? I'm very well. Lovely to have you back on the show with us. <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. So a, di a different subject today, but also a very, very important one. So we are talking about debts today and the mental effects that it does have on people. So, so why is debt such an issue and why do people even... Um, consider suicide when when they have debts. Yeah, I think um, you know some of the figures that I was kind of looking at before I came on to speak to you this evening. Like I think by the end of twenty sixteen, the average UK household is going to be close to around ten thousand pounds in debt. So wow. I think debt is really quite a big issue for a lot of people. And 
often the reason why things can get out of hand is often because people feel embarrassed about it, they don't necessarily want to talk to somebody about it, and then they're left feeling quite isolated and alone. But why, why is there such an embarrassment though when it comes to debts, maybe compared to other issues, other problems that a person can go through? Yeah, I suppose when we think about uh, when people get into debt, um, it can leave people very powerless, um, it can be very embarrassing, um, people might feel like they've failed in some way or let mm. their family down. So, like you said, it's very closely linked with depression as well. And I think with any things around mental health, there's always sometimes a stigma that can be attached and often people don't necessarily want to come forward for support around it. Yeah, I suppose maybe they feel afraid also that you know, people will think they've been irresponsible with their finances, that they've yeah. been silly to get themselves into debt. But like we spoke earlier, people get into debt for all sorts of reasons. Could be someone falls sick in the family and they can't work anymore, or be made redundant, unemployment, all sorts of things that can happen to a person. Yeah, absolutely. And I think really the, the consequences of debt can, can affect people in lots of different ways. Um, as you've mentioned already, um, it can lead to depression, can lead to stress, increased anxiety, and can even lead to relationship breakdown as well, because it can really place a massive strain upon um, partners. Um, and like you've mentioned as well, it can really lead people to think that actually the only way out of this is to take my life as a result. Mm. Um, and suicide can often be an option that, that people think is the only way to get out of the situation. Yeah, and we will be finding actually that that is definitely not the answer to things um, because yeah. there is actually a lot of help out there for people that, you know, maybe there's some things that we're going to be discussing after the break will actually enlighten people to see how, just how much help is available and that it's, not, it's never a lost case. Yeah, and I think that's um, a very important message to get across, that even though it feels very isolating and that there's no, we might think that there's no support out there, there is plenty of resources um, that people can really tap into to really help them get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if someone is going through uh, this situation, they are feeling low, how, how can they um, maybe mentally pull themselves out of that state of depression or, or the worry and anxiety that they're feeling? What's the first step, would you say, apart from talking about it, obviously? Yeah, absolutely. It can be a really difficult situation to pull, pull yourself out of. And I think one of the first things that people need to do is begin to maybe, um, you know, face the facts that they possibly are in debt. And it's about really trying to begin to take back some of that control. Um, and often when people get into debt, it can feel like the debt's in control of us and we can feel that there's a lack of control within ourselves. So actually going to seek some help and trying to get a money management plan in place. Mm -hmm. And also it's really important once we maybe do get things resolved um, is to think about, well, actually what led to me getting to debt in the first place um, so that we don't repeat that again. And often it can be a result of our attitudes that we maybe have to money, maybe we were living beyond our means. And um, so it's about really taking a step back once we resolve the debt issues and thinking, how can I make sure this doesn't happen again? Mm -hmm. Now, some of these issues obviously could date back from, from a person's childhood, maybe the way you know they were brought up and things sure. that they, 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 maybe they've some learned habits that they have. So it could be anything really, couldn't it? Yeah, there can be a whole um, range of things that, that people can um, experience in childhood. They've maybe uh, witnessed their parents dealing money in with, with money in certain ways and they've picked up those habits and, and carried them on through into their own lives. So, yeah, very much um, can be down to the person's attitude and how they've kind of learnt to mm -hmm. uh, manage money and, and debt as well. Okay. And in terms of re re rebuilding your confidence, what advice would mm -hmm. you give, Glenn? I think one of the first things really is about trying to um, you know, speak to somebody um, and to not really struggle. I think often when people get into debt, there's this uh, tendency to bury our heads in the sand mm -hmm. and pretend it's not there and avoid it. But actually what happens is this avoidance just keeps the whole thing maintained. So really trying to find somebody that you trust. Um, that may be somebody within your family. It may be a mental health professional, GP. Um, or a money management company to try and explore ways to, to move forward from the debt because there is mm. um, a way to move forward through this. And unfortunately, suicide is often a, an option that people take, but actually I think it's really important to communicate that there are, other, there are options out there to um, help people get out of the debt situation that they're in. 
Okay. And in terms of um, family members and friends, what could they do to, to help? Obviously, we're not, gonna, we're not saying that friends and family should pay off the debts, because like you said, there <laughs> might be underlying issues um, where you know, can pay off a person's debts, but then maybe get themselves into debt again. Um, but in, in terms of support, what's the best help that friends and family could give? I suppose friends and family really just being a, a listening voice, uh, or not a listening voice, a listening ear, uh, to let that person just really communicate how they're feeling. And I suppose not passing judgment um, yeah. on the individual as well, because very often that's why people don't necessarily come forward to discuss the debt, because they fear, how are people going to react? What are people going to think about me? And that can often stop them seeking support in the first place. Okay. So, Glenn, what are some of the signs that maybe a person could be getting into debt? Sure, and I think when we think around what some of those signs might be, it's going to really vary from person to person. Um, some of the signs that you might begin to be looking out for is that if you're finding it really difficult um, to pay your bills, if you find that actually your money worries are really building up and up and up, and it's something that's always on your mind. Mm -hmm. um, if you maybe notice that you're now beginning to ask friends and family to borrow money, um, if you're maybe using credit cards, or have multiple credit cards can be another sign that things are starting to maybe slip a bit towards the debt. Payday loans um, are all signs that we want to be looking out for to try and prevent us getting into debt in the first place. Glenn, thank you so, so much for your great advice as usual. Thank you. No problem. Now, if you've had an experience with debt, have managed to solve your financial problems and want to share your story, do get in touch via the site on chrissybshow.tv or tweet us at chrissybshow or comment on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Now here on this program, we're always trying to find ways to help you at home with all sorts of problems. And this time, it's about how to help you save your pennies. And if you like to go shopping, you should definitely keep watching because here's a way of going shopping without killing your bank account. And at the same time, helping a very worthy cause. Check this out. Charity shops are all about finding fab items at affordable prices and for good causes. Hidden treasures can be found in some charity shops, but finding them isn't always easy. So I've come down to Marie Curie today to try and bag a bargain. But before we go in, I've got some simple do's and don'ts to get you started on your charity shopping quest. 1. Shop on a Monday. Most people donate over the weekend. 2. Hi. Be nice yes, to the staff. thank you. Bye. They know where the good stuff is. Three, try before you buy and check the size fits. And finally, don't be afraid to hunt for the treasures. That's nice, Kate. Either the hat's too small or, or my head's just too big. Girls in white dresses oh, that's nice. That is actually really gorgeous. The colour is so nice. Wow, £4.50. It's a bargain. Some things look nicer on than off. And this is an example of why you should try things on. Because that looks a lot nicer on than it did. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine items so far. That's in the space of about 15 minutes. So I'm going to try these items on now and see which ones I like. When you can wear what you feel, what do you want to say? Now love is a little member that you can wear each day. So I'm here with Richard from Marie Curie Charity. So can you tell us why it's such a popular charity? Well, it's all to do with um, the clothing, what we sell, and the, the cancer care itself is for, you know, because we take care of a lot of cancer, terminally ill people in our nursing homes. And uh, basically this is why people come in here, is to help the organisation, to uh, help cater for the nurses who cater for the people that are terminally ill. And what does, where does the money raised go to? Uh, nursing homes. All our, all our hospices is for the nurses, basically to help uh, maintain our hospices and to help terminally ill in our cancer care. Well, thanks very much, Richard. 
So I've selected these five items and um, I've calculated how much it is and the charity shop price is £24 compared to the retail price which would be roughly about £210. So as you can see we've got huge bargains here and all good quality clothes as well. So I'm really happy. Perfect, thank you so much. And you? I will, definitely. Thank you. So thanks to Marie Curie, I've managed to bag a few bargains and save quite a lot of money as well. Remember, all the money raised goes towards Marie Curie Nursing. So what are you waiting for? Get charity shopping. Well, up next, we have Step Change Debt Charity, who will be telling us about the type of debt help that's available out there. And later on, I'll be giving you my top tips on a different type of debt, and that's how not to be in debt with people. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back and today we're discussing debt and depression. Now these are two subjects that people find it very hard to talk about but it's important that we can help those who need it. Now just before the break we found out about the mental effects of what debt can do to an individual thanks to psychologist Glenn Mason. And if you've missed this you can watch this episode and all of our other previous shows on our YouTube channel The Chrissy B Show and do please subscribe also. And now we're going to play you this video before we welcome our next guest. Let's check this out. Life is hard, very hard for some people. It's very, very easy to get in debt. It's a lot harder to get out of debt. But there are solutions, and if you go to the right place, you can get the right answers. And here is where we get them. <laughs> People who work here, they're here because they want to help people. We aren't profit-making, fee-charging. We believe, you know, if you've got problems with your finances, then the last thing you want is another potential bill to have to pay. We're all passionate about wanting to help people. I think that's what sort of gels us and knits us all together. We're just not a call centre. We've all got the same mission. Help these people on this journey to becoming um, debt-free, and it's quite amazing, really, isn't it? Yeah. It definitely gives you a sense of perspective. In some cases, you've changed people's lives. That's a privilege, really. There's not many jobs where you can say that you can do that. We want them to be able to wake up in the morning and go, fantastic, I've got my life back. Knowing the relief and the tensions have all gone. And suddenly they're saying, thank you. You mean, I can sleep at night and things like that, so it's brilliant. There's always a solution for someone. To come to work and help people and then, you know, go home and know that you've made a difference, it's indescribable. If you have the right support, the right solutions then it's it's not going to be that bad it's never too late that's what we say and you can get through it definitely and now please welcome policy advisor at step change debt charity joe surtees hello joe hi chris how are you i'm very well thank you <laughs> So lovely to have you on. I just have to say, I, I love the advert because everyone looks so positive and friendly and approachable. So I think it's such a, such a lovely, seem, like a seem nice environment, really good. And that's <laughs> what we really try to offer at Step Change, really open environment for people to come and get help and not feel put off or scared. Yeah, because it's important to have, obviously, friendly people because it is something that is a you know, really difficult problem for many people to go through, to have so many debts and they are effective affected negatively in a, in a mental way, what I'm saying. And just to have people that understand you and, you know, friendly like that, it looks really good. Yes, <laughs> really I, actually, helpful. I actually work with those people and they're like that in real life oh, as well. They look, that's what I'm saying, they look really genuine. It doesn't look like it's actors or anything, which is, which is great. Now tell us a bit more about the charity, how it was set up in the first place and, and why it was set up. So Step Change was set up about 20 years ago and mm. the aim was to offer free, impartial 
debt advice to anybody who needed it to help them deal with their unsecured debt problems, their credit cards, their payday loans, yeah. their personal loans. And what we do is we operate on the telephone and online and help people take control of their finances, mm -hmm. budget, and then if they need to, access a debt solution that's appropriate for them, for example, an individual voluntary arrangement or a mm -hmm. debt relief order. Okay. Now, obviously, when people come to you, the are many of them quite distressed about what they're going through and like maybe not very positive about the change? Debt is very stressful for individuals and also their families. Mm -hmm. So we've done quite a lot of work on this. We found that something like 70% of people who come to us say their relationship with their family has been really badly affected mm -hmm. by being in debt, having to struggle with debt. Yeah. And around 50% have said they've actually gone to their GP for help with physical or mental health issues that were caused by their financial struggles. Right. Do you get it the other way around as well, that people that, for example, um, got like they have debt and then they get depressed because of it, and the other way around as well? There is a like way... They have, I'm trying to think of... You understand what I mean, don't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, there is a very <laughs> strong two-way relationship between yeah. debt and depression and mental health issues. A lot mm. of the people who we deal with become quite upset and quite stressed and anxious due to their debt. Yeah. But also, people who have mental health issues, pre-existing, tend to, yeah. because of the mental energy involved in dealing yeah. with your finances, mm. can often find themselves in difficulty. Yeah. Now, um, obviously, what's the, the first step a person should take if they, if they do have debts, would you say? What's what the we, most important thing to we do? We always say is, don't bury your head in the sand. Don't yeah. ignore the problem. Don't try to pretend it doesn't exist. Mm. What you need to do is take control of your finances, get a handle on what's coming in every month, what your income is, mm -hmm. what your bills are. And then, and then when you've had a look at that, we'd really recommend asking for help from a professional. And that could be a debt advice charity such as ourselves. Yeah. But also people should not feel scared about talking to their creditors, talking to their bank, and trying to come to some sort of arrangement if they're struggling to pay. If but if people are sort of getting hounded in a sense by people that you know, they owe money to, and it's, it seems like a quite a scary thing to actually talk to people that you owe, you owe? Is it, it, does that kind of stop people from facing the problem because they've been receiving so many letters and it, things? It does, and what we would say is that a lot of banks and creditors probably need to do more to understand mm. the difficulties that people are in, to understand the mental pressures that they face, yeah. and act more sensitively. If people don't want to talk to their bank, and I understand it's scary, they can mm. go to an advice agency. So, for example, many of your watchers will have a local systems advice bureau who yeah. will actually interact with your creditors for you and do a lot of that scarier one-on-one -on -one interaction with your they bank. They'll actually do it on your behalf, would they? they? They will do that, yes. Oh, right, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, I suppose also when you get a letter through the post, it seems a lot scarier than actually maybe talking to someone in person or face-to-face, -face, isn't it? I mean, it looks, seems worse. I'd, I'd, what I'd say to people is that a lot of these letters are scary mm -hmm. and they're written to deliberately um, put the fear of God into you, <laughs> to make you phone up and yeah, try something. to deal with something. But yeah. actually, with a lot, in a lot of these cases, if you pick up the phone and if you mm -hmm. get in contact with your bank, they'll probably be more understanding on the phone than it seems they would be from the letter they've sent. Okay. And in terms of when debts are huge mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe the person will never be able to, to pay them off, what, what normally happens then? Well, you do have a range of sort of st what are called statutory debt solutions mm -hmm. that you can access that will write off some or all of your debt. If you've got yeah. a lot of um, money that you owe, a, a very significant amount, you can access mm -hmm. a thing called bankruptcy. Yeah. If you've got slightly less than that, a sort of intermediate amount, you can access, often access, what's known as an individual voluntary arrangement. Mm -hmm. And if you've got lower levels of debts, but not much income, you can access what's called a debt relief order. And now, okay. independent advice agencies and in fact your banks will be able to tell you more details about this. Okay. There's also more information on the Money Advice Services website if people want to look online. Mm -hmm. so, it's, it's, so it shows that it's never a a lost case, is there? Because there's always some kind of avenue to go down where you can get help or either getting ripped off or get some, something. There's always something that can be done. It's not like, oh, this is over now, it's it for me. I can't the, do anything. The worst thing that people can do is believe that they've reached the end mm -hmm. and just completely ignore all the issues. There are a range of debt solutions out there that people can access and will help them recover in time. Mm -hmm.
Obviously, prevention is better than cure, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> so the, the, the trick is not to get into debt in the first place. But obviously, you know, things do happen in life. You know, there's unemployment, people made redundant, not expecting things like that to happen. They can't, you know, keep up with the bills. But say if, um, okay, those are, I would say, a separate case where, you know, something's happening, it's not your fault. But obviously, how can someone prevent getting into debt in the first place, apart from the obvious? I think there's two um, avenues, really. People are trying not to get into debt. Well, obviously, nobody mm -hmm. wants to get into debt. The first is we would always recommend people do their utmost to save, to get some precautionary assets. Mm. So when you hit that bump in the road, maybe you've had your hours reduced at work, you've yeah. got a little bit of money to fall back on. And the second thing is budgeting. Now, mm. it's often boring. Nobody really enjoys budgeting all that much. But if you can, if you can put down on paper what you have to spend every month and how that relates to what you've got coming in, that's what we'd really urge people to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the, the budgeting is very important because sometimes we think we, we're spending a certain amount on, on an area, say shopping or, or eating out. But when you actually sit down and you write down everything, account for absolutely everything, it's quite surprising how much more you could end up spending mm -hmm. Because I did this exercise recently, I thought, I said to my husband, let's just work out how much we spend on, like, you know, eating out or things like that. And it was more than, than what I thought. So you can kind of think you're doing okay with that and actually spend, you could be saving a lot more than and what you are. There's another advantage to that, which is if you go through all your bills, for example, your utility mm. bills, you can see whether what you're paying is more than you should be paying yeah. and then try to go to a competitor. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people don't even check their bank statements, do they? No, I saw a bit yeah. of news out today that said one in five people don't check their bank statements, which wow. is concerning, certainly. Yeah, because anything could be coming out and mm. things that you don't need, direct debits that you didn't even remember and things like that. Any final advice, um, Joe, that you'd give our viewers, maybe the top things to look out for or something that would be really helpful for our viewers? I mean, I think the very, very top advice I'd give is if people do feel that they're falling into difficulty, even at a very early stage, yeah. They really should seek advice, whether that be from their creditor, whether mm. that be from a friend, or yeah. whether that be from an independent advice agency such as Step Change or Systems Advice yeah. or the Money Advice Trust. So you are definitely not alone. Are you they, are Joe? not alone. All right. Thank you so, so much for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. So later on, I'll also be giving you my top tips on a different type of debt, and that's how not to be in debt with people and to be reliable and trustworthy and I'll explain to you later why that is so import important so do stay tuned only here on the Chrissy B show Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky 203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Hello everybody and welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show and this episode has been all about the difficult subject of debt and depression. Now debt is a type of problem that can really make people develop mental health conditions and if not taken care of can even lead to having suicidal thoughts as we mentioned earlier with the stats and it could really happen to anyone. Now, keeping a healthy body and mind is very important for life in general but especially if you're going through any issues. But if you're in debt, you have the added pressure of not feeling you can afford to look after yourself well, which isn't true. You don't have to be a member of a gym, for example, to keep fit. Here's Jane to show us some effective exercises that you can do outdoors. The fitter your body is, the fitter your mind is, and you'll be able to deal with any issues you might have. Plus, you get to spend time outdoors, and that's also great for your mental health. Let's take a look. Hi 
everyone, it's Jane here with your fitness tips. As you can see, I'm out in the beautiful outdoors um, and I'm next to a common or garden bench that you'll find in any park that you go to. So I want to show you some simple exercises to prove that you can get fit outdoors. You don't necessarily need to go to a gym. So um, bear in mind that if you do these exercises I'm going to show you, especially the step ups, you'd want to warm up and stretch first. So I just want to say that you want to do a little warm up first. This is quite hard because some of you might remember the Reebok step everyone used to do the classes. Well, this is the same thing, but it's much higher. So let me just show you how you would safely do a step up on a bench like this. I'm just going to turn my back on you, excuse my back for a minute. You would come up with one leg, up, up, down, down. Now, can you see that I've got my whole foot on the bench? I don't want to have my foot hanging off because I'm more likely to fall off and I'm going to change legs. Now, what you could do is alternate legs every time or you could do, say, 10 on one leg and 10 on the other. If you want to make it a little bit harder, you push your arms up, bring your arms down. Elevating your arms raises your heart rate. And I tell you what, do a few of these and you'll feel it here straight away. And the next day, you'll really know that you've worked your bum and the legs. It's a great exercise. I'll show you another one for the chest and the shoulders and the arms. You can do a press up on the bench. So, you know, if you haven't got a mat and you want to do some upper body work in the park, check this out. So you have your hands nice and wide, take it down and up. And the great thing about doing press ups on the bench is it's actually easier than with your hands on the floor. Having that elevation makes it a little bit easier. So if you can't manage a full press up normally, you might find that you can on a bench, which is great. Next one's for your triceps, the back of the arm. I'll show you the easy version. The easy version is with your knees bent. Now I'm not gonna let my elbows come out, see that? You gotta keep your elbows pointing backwards and you dip down and lift. If you're nice and strong in the shoulders, make sure you don't do this by the way. If you're nice and strong, straighten out your legs and dip from there. So there's more body weight going into your arms like this. These are quite tough. You might only wanna do sets of 10 at a time, maybe do a set of triceps, set of press-ups, then do your cardio, your step-ups, then repeat your triceps and your chest. There's more cardio you can do as well on the bench. I'll show you one more thing. Say you want to raise your heart rate a little bit. You can do these runs like this. You can also do the cheats burpees. The burpees that everyone hates, I'm going to show you one. I'm only going to do one because I hate them too. Are they good for you? But I do hate them. Up, down. Everyone hates them, but they're very good for you. Okay, cheats version. Here, up. Here, and up. Okay, folks, enjoy your outdoor fitness, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much, Jane. But now I'm going to talk about a different type of debt, which is how not to be in debt with people. Now, what I'm going to speak about isn't money related, but can affect your credit score as an individual. So here are my tips for today. The first point is keep your promises. So make sure that you are reliable and stick to what you say. So don't be tempted, for example, to do something else that comes up that looks even more appealing. Now, obviously, it's important not to overpromise. There's a well-known saying that goes, it's better to underpromise and overdeliver than to overpromise and underdeliver. So if you see you're really struggling with something and you're unlikely to meet that deadline, don't be afraid of telling the person. Be honest, because the sooner you let them know, the sooner they'll be able to sort something else out. But if you leave it to the you know, close to the deadline or even after the deadline, that's even worse. That's really frustrating and people will lose trust in you. So do make sure you keep your promises. And that's not just with work, that's with any area of your life, actually. The second point is get back to people. Now, me personally, when someone phones me and I'm busy, I will normally send a text as soon as I can to say something like, sorry, can't talk right now. And actually on, on some of the smartphones you get nowadays, um, it, can come, it comes up with messages that you can just choose quickly, just so the person knows that you know they're calling or, or contacting you. 
So I do let people know that I'll text them later. Now, it's the same with emails as well. So don't just ignore the person or pretend that you didn't see their call or their email. So for example, again, smartphones nowadays, love them, but sometimes they can get us into trouble. The person can see if you've actually read the email, for example, or if you've, you've seen the, the telegram message, they can see that you've actually read it. So if they see that you've read it and then you're also not bothering to get back to them, that makes you look even worse. So just be careful of that. So my third point is, don't be a yes person. So if you're generally a reliable person, the more things, you know, definitely more things will come your way because you have that reputation, but you have to also be realistic about how much you can actually do. And you have to say no to certain things and not feel bad about it. But also be careful not to become a no person. So you have to kind of strike that balance. So it's better to say no than to say yes and not do it. And, you know, this kind of, this really lets a person down. So just watch that as well. And my next point is something that's very important to me is to be on time. So one of the things I really hate is lateness. Make sure you're on time. Don't keep people waiting as though you're some sort of prince or princess that can walk in any time you feel like it. I think it's disrespectful and tells a person that you don't care. So it's the same with work. So if you're meant to start work at nine o'clock, don't think that it's okay to start a minute after that. Oh, it's not that late. So I was having a debate with someone the other day about this and she was telling me that it's okay uh, as long as it's not past 9.15 when she's supposed to start work at nine, it's fine because 9.15 isn't late. For me, I, I, I really can't get my head around that. I think if your work time is nine o'clock, you should be there five minutes earlier to settle in and everything. And then you start work at nine, 9.15, one minute past nine was already late. So. I don't know, that, that's just me, that really bothers me and I think it shows a lack of consideration again, but for some people it might be okay, but for me it's a no-no. All right, so let's go to my next point. Number five, take pride in what you do. So even if what you are doing, you're finding really, really boring, it's no excuse to do it badly or carelessly. And don't fool yourself into thinking that, you know, maybe one day when I'm given something better to do, then I will do it well probably you won't. So learn to look after and do, you know, the small things, even if it's something boring, do that thing well and bigger responsibilities will probably be given to you. And my last point is do it with a smile. So some people, when, when they're, they're doing certain things, especially at work, if they don't like what they're doing, they've got this face like thunder and, and it's, it's really difficult to work with that kind of person. It can even be, uh, the person can even be really good at their work really good but if they're doing it with that stroppy face it's like you're, you're kind of reluctant to give them more stuff or more responsibilities and it could actually um, kind of block you from from moving on in the company or, or whatever you know other area it is so just be careful of your facial expressions even if it's something you don't like you don't need to let everyone know about it for the way you, you look so just watch that as well and just before we go I think one of the underlying things that we you know we kept repeating with every guest that we had on today's program is the need to talk about the issue so I know debt is something that maybe feels embarrassing to talk about and it's it's difficult to to open up about but if you don't as with any other issue in life especially mental health problems as well if you keep it bottled up inside, it's going to feel a lot worse and the problem seems a lot bigger than what it actually is. Even if you are thousands and thousands of pounds in debt, keeping it all inside is not going to do you any good at all. So it's really, really important that you muster up that courage just to speak to someone, even if, as we heard, even if it's a friend or a close family member that you trust, at least get the conversation going and then from there, then you can take the next step of getting professional advice. And as we saw today, there are so many charities that actually offer free counseling, free debt counseling. They, they help you know, you know where, where you can go, who you can talk to, how to get some debts written off even. So there are always options out there. So don't ever think that no matter how big your problem is with debt, don't ever think that that's it, that's the end of the world, you'll never be able to recover. We saw from the news stories, even at the beginning with Jenny, how some celebrities lost everything, but they managed to rebuild themselves as well. So the same can happen to you. Don't think that you know, they're, they're hugely different from, from the way you are. It's just a case of getting the right advice, getting the right support, learning from maybe from past mistakes, 
if you got into debt, you know, because of not being careful and, and moving forward in life. Everyone goes through issues, but you can definitely recover. All right, guys, so those are my points for today. And sadly, that's all we have time for. But if you guys have a story to tell us, an experience to share to help educate, inspire and motivate others, do contact us by filling in the form on chrissybshow.tv. Also, if you have any advice about today's subject and you'd like to participate in any discussion, you can tweet us at Chrissy B Show and also you can visit our Facebook page. Don't forget to like the page and also comment there, The Chrissy B Show. Really hope you enjoyed the show and also learned something today. Till next time, bye-bye for now.